Hello. You caught me while I was working on a mistake. The cloud giant that I have been working on, I am doing some fix sometimes in the miniature painting business, just like everything else. It can be easy to come up and have a mistake. So this miniature I painted with the intention of having the lower robe, which you can see some here being orange, to really contrast the blue in the skin. And contrast in colors can be extremely powerful to draw your eye and direct the eye into certain areas of what you're wanting people to focus on. So using contrast in colors can be a very strong tool as an artist. But just like everything else, sometimes if we think about things and plan things and execute things and try to do a good job on them, they just don't quite come out right. Doesn't mean we intentionally messed up or anything like that. I always consider it an opportunity to learn and grow and try again. With painting, that's one of the beautiful things is because we're just painting, we can take any time that we have these errors or things we don't like and just paint over it. Now with this miniature here, the reason I want to paint over this orange is because with the skin being a blue tint, the orange was contrasting very well. But with the skin having those blues and being a cooler tone, the orange being a warmer tone, the contrast was definitely there, but it was too much. There was too much orange. It was too large of a section, and they became too competitive against each other, the blue and the orange. Sometimes we have to try things and give it a best effort, do all the layering techniques, and still have to go back to square one. So to fix my mistake, I went through and just painted over gray. I'll do an additional coat as well, just to make sure I have good coverage and that none of the orange shows through. And gray is a good neutral base. It allows us to start things over from a clean slate. And I'm sure there's a life lesson in there somewhere, but I'm just here to paint minis in the studio. So while that's got some drawing to do, I want to talk a little bit about the miniature that we're going to be painting today. And I've been at it for a bit, so I'm going to have to wet the whistle throughout a little bit and uh, then we'll really get into it. Uh, this morning I noticed that the schedule for this stream, our Saturday stream, had an error. It had us starting at 12 a.m. and not 12 p.m. So for three weeks the, I have not been following the schedule and I apologize, but we are on the correct schedule now with 12 p.m. And uh, I removed the time block of two hours and four hours kind of rotating. And I just put, I don't know, because I don't know how long we'll be at the, at the table painting each time. A lot of it depends on what are we painting, um, what are the techniques that we're covering, what have I got going on throughout the day, the whole nine yards. So there's a lot that goes into it. 
So I just put I don't know and we'll go from a case by case basis and see where we're going. So for today's miniature, I have a few that I've finished um, now on my commission and for my um, my exchanges and in personal use. So I had a little bit of opportunity to think, okay, what do I want to paint this Saturday on the stream? And I have a few things in process, but I thought, why not start from scratch on something? And so you can see on the table here, I've got a miniature. I did put the miniature on a base. I just super glued the miniature on a base after I did some cleanup on mold lines and uh, just making sure that it was ready for paint, giving it a nice uh, wash with the warm water and uh, uh, mild dish soap and so I super glued it onto a base put it on some blue tack onto a lid onto the handle sounds like a lot took a few minutes but uh, that part is pretty quick but this miniature actually goes back to a different show that I do and it is on Wednesday nights um, we are starting it at 630 now 630 it's called inspirations building a character or a monster off of a miniature. So I pick a miniature and we build a character or a monster, depending on what the miniature is, off of the miniature. Instead of coming up with a character concept and then creating a, uh, you know, a good story in our head of what that character is like and who they are and how they dress and what equipment they're carrying and then trying to find a miniature to match it. I decided let's flip that on its head, let's build a character off of a miniature. So that is the premise of our Wednesday night show, and I thought what better way to um, celebrate our, our third week on Twitch than to use one of those characters and actually paint the miniature. So this is the first character that we did on our show. I've got the character sheet that we used and built right here. Um, this character we went through and built using a standard array and started it out really good. I still have some cleanup to do because I was going too slow and didn't get it done. Um, so I've still got the character to do, but this is Larissa Hope, who is a tiefling cleric and their domain is knowledge. And it's got a fantastic backstory. I've still got to put it on the character sheet. Um, but if you're curious about the show, it is on our YouTube channel now. But I thought, why don't we paint this miniature Larissa and do kind of a start to finish. I don't know if we'll get it done today um, because it is a 28 millimeter. Um, but in some of the shows we had talked about using these miniatures and the character as a uh, giveaway, as a prize at some point. And um, I don't know if people would be into it or not. But I think it's kind of a cool concept. Um, maybe if nobody is interested in it, maybe we'll use this as a, as a uh, character in our game shop um, or one shots, who knows. But for Larissa Hope, part of the backstory is um, they are kind of uh, utilizing their cleric cover to hide that they're a tiefling and um, with that uh, domain of knowledge, it allowed us an opportunity to think of more colorful uh, kind of colors, which I don't normally do on miniature characters. Uh, their background was a uh, soldier, a scout. And uh, so yeah, I think it'll be good. Um, before it dries, I'm just going to do one more final quick bit on this cloud giant on the gray. Thin out this paint a little bit. This paint is not on my wet palette, so i um, got to add just a touch of water. When the uh, show started, I actually I got... Uh, Mr. Roger vibes, showing my age, showing my age. Um, this cloud giant I worked on a little bit, I think in last week's stream, and uh, excited to do it. It's an absolutely gorgeous sculpt, 
Um, none of my campaigns that I'm currently running uh, have cloud giants in them. Um, one of them did, but I actually had to change it because the uh, player characters uh, in a location um, did a little bit that uh, was unexpected for me. So I had to change a little bit of my uh, of my campaign to accommodate what they wanted to do. And so instead of bringing in a uh, few cloud giants, I had to uh, kind of change out that story element. And so they will not be encountering the cloud giants, at least not yet. Um, but there's an area in this story where they uh, they can visit a cloud giant palace and it's an old abandoned in ruin cloud giant palace and um, basically depending on the on the choices that the characters make while there um, it summons three cloud giants uh, but they made some some uh, different choices than what I kind of anticipated so I had to change it out and um, now they will not be the cloud giants will not be making an appearance but definitely one good thing about painting is <clears throat> the ability to change so let's move this over a little bit there is that cloud giant that whole road part there was a very strong powerful orange we've got it back to gray because I am going to change it out and have a very light color I can now move that palette aside I've got my wet palette all set up this is my ghetto palette I use it generally for traveling it is just Tupperware with some sponges water and parchment paper you can see I've got no paint in there yet because we are starting from just absolute raw. So looking at the miniature, first things really to note is what are we going to be painting and where? You can see that uh, the face is pretty well hidden by cloaks. Um, so not a whole lot of skin tones. Also on the hand that is exposed, um, it is really gloved. So very little skin tones. The biggest focus on this miniature here is in fabrics. There is a very kind of deep underlayer, robe, this kind of vestibule piece, a cloak, um, gloves, there is armor, there is leather, uh, armor, pauldron, a shield. The pauldron actually has some spikes on it. At first I was going to scrape those away um, just because this is a cleric and not a fighter. Um, looks like I may have just a touch of debris in that fold. Clean that up real quick. I thought I cleaned that all good. So lots of opportunity for us to use um, softer colors. We don't have to worry as much on skin tones. Um, so I am actually going to use... Um, <laughs> I am going to use the fair skin triad, I believe. Um, well, I could also do the rosy. I'm trying to think because they're cloaked and hidden, they're not going to get a whole lot of, of uh, like sun, right? Um, with the tiefling background, uh, I'm thinking of using the rosy just to have that little bit of red tone to it. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. I'm 
All right, so um, the colors are going to be rosy shadow, rosy skin, and rosy highlight. So pretty simple colors. They are a triad. Uh, these are Reaper MSP paints. And I may add in just a little bit of Stark Naked for a final highlight to that rosy highlight, um, just to really make the highest points really pop out and shine. So give them good shakes. I want these really good and mixed up, but I don't want to use the vortex because it's so loud. And then we're just going to pop a drop of each or two onto our palette. And then the ones I'm working on, I always just keep to the side. Just so that I have them handy and accessible. And a size zero brush. I'm going to start with the shadow color. And you'll see how extremely careful I am with this. Cover that whole face up. I don't worry about going on the cloak. I don't worry about going outside the lines because I've got a lot of paint to apply beyond this. And this is such a small, tiny area um, that it really does not take much paint. Um, one of the things that I like about these dropper bottles is if they have I would say over 300 drops on them. And you can see that was a very little amount that you need for that miniature. So a very, very small amount that you need. It goes a long way. Part of the challenge on painting is when you're painting, you've got to wait for everything to dry before you can move on. So that's what we do. We wait. And that's occasionally why I have multiple um, miniatures going at a time and so that I can continue to paint even while something is drying. Good example is the stag. This is a giant stag that we've been uh, slightly working on and uh, uh, just very very small amounts of detail that we've added in. This is basically in the process of being base coated so I can work on it a little bit. <clears throat> and I actually there is my there it is. And <clears throat> this stag I am basing off of an elk. So color-wise, I am using the uh, kind of general coloring of an elk. And I'll paint on this guy a little bit while we're waiting for our clerics paint to dry. Now generally I would change out and have this on the handle. But because it's such a small area that we painted on that cleric, it's going to dry fast. 
this just allows me to keep my brushes moving get more work done so recently I have gotten all caught up on the Mandalorian um, and I have been working on getting caught up on Boba Fett uh, I try not to give any spoilers here or anything but um, because I'm a big Star Wars fan from ages ago. I try to uh, try to absorb and watch anything Star Wars. Uh, it's not always my cup of tea, but uh, I like Star Wars. I have uh, played a lot of Star Wars RPGs. Uh, my my first GM, who is also my oldest brother, uh, used to have the Star Wars West End Games RPG. Um, I actually bought a copy of it off of uh, RPG Drive Through, uh, just a like a reprint of it because it was so much fun and. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. We had a great campaign going with some very interesting and colorful characters. Remember to help the rebellion. We built a, or put a lot of credits anyhow towards a rebel base that we called Paradise City. And the like main cantina there we called the go to hell saloon a great place to conduct shady business for the republic while trying to avoid imperial entanglements it was so much fun i have so many memories of paradise city and the to go to hell saloon such a fun campaign like i said super colorful characters the GM was fantastic because uh, not only is he super creative, but um, also just very uh, allowing of other creativity. So, for instance, I have always liked the Battlestar Galactica Vipers. So I was able to bring in a Viper class into that game world. One of the cool things about RPGs is you can do so much, uh, you know, bridging of different things. In one of my campaigns, the ship that the party is on, the Aurora, just recently came across a ghost ship. And instead of like a pirate ghost ship, this is actually a, uh, a, like what would be a, not modern day because they're too big, but like a, a more modern uh, luxury cruiser. So, um, not quite like as big as the Titanic with as many people or anything, but I mean in that similar vein It was a luxury liner and they had to go in and explore and try to uh, I mean some of them wanted to go through and look for things like valuables that they could take and um, It was very much a, uh, a horror kind of setting So I thought it was kind of cool um, the players absolutely ate it up and loved it too. So it, it uh, worked out really, really well. And just using up some of the paint. It's one of the things that uh, I try to do is just use up some paint. Of course, these antlers will get a different uh, 
color. I do a, I have a really good formula for horn, um, antlers in particular, because I consider horn different than antlers. But this allows me to get all of the paint used so that I don't leave too much behind on the palette. And we can go back to our cleric. So we've got that rosy skin tones in there. Oh, that probably is not going to come up very good. So this is the rosy shadow. I'm going to do one more layer of this rosy shadow. Just to have real good opacity and coverage over the gray. So this model here is out of the Bones 5 Kickstarter line. This was part of the, I believe this was part of the Dungeon Dwellers um, expansion. I would have to double check. Um, but while we're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to go ahead and work a little bit on the undertones or some of the underclothing. And to do that, I'm going to use a couple of different colors. I tried to work from like the deepest level out. That way, as you're painting the next layer, you're not having to worry about going past it or anything like that. So with this figure here, because the boots are kind of above the inner cloak part of this, um, it's kind of, it's the way it's sculpted. You have to think, what is the color of this cloak, the inner cloak, going to be? So I know I want to go more uh, brighter, bolder colors, but the lining on this cloak, I'm going to say, is going to be kind of bland. So I am just going to paint it as if it is a almost burlap color, I guess. Um, that's going to do two things for me. It's going to allow me a neutral base for the colors that I'm going to put in there to pop out a little bit stronger. And it's not going to detract the eye from the areas I want it to focus on. So same thing we did on the face, just laying in some colors. That will... actually have a lot of colors kind of surrounding them. And again, this is just base coating first layers, so I'm not worried about being super clean and tidy on my lines. We'll give that a little bit of a wash and then touch it up again and then highlight it with a khaki highlight. Again, this is going to be a neutral base that all other parts will stand out from. So thinking about those levels, those layers, how do we want to have the eye look at it? It's almost going to look like the, uh, the robes or, or skirt part here is more floating over this neutral background. So think of uh, uh, a, a very neutral color that you want to use if you want to have those colored layers really stand out and really pop out. Uh, because we want to have a lot of separation from this to the cloak because we're going to use bolder colors. And you can see that rosy skin already dried so we can move up to a blend of rosy shadow and rosy skin. 
this is just a 50-50 from that triad. The goal here is to push the shadows deeper in. So concentrate on areas that would be highlighted. So avoid the eye socket areas. Hit the chin a touch on the jawline. Not much. There isn't much to work with here, remember. This is a very small area. About that forehead. Beautiful. Get that brush nice and clean. Now I'm going to prep up my black as well as my linen white because the next level is going to be just rosy skin. Once we get that level put on there, we're going to put in the eyes because cleanup from that point. Um, is super easy. We'll have only applied three layers or three colors of paint. So it's a great time to do eyes so that if you mess up, it's easy to fix. Once you get past that point, you're adding more and more highlights in select smaller areas so it's harder to fix. And just waiting for that sheen on that um, driftwood color to tone down. Once it's nice and dry, I'm going to do the same exact thing. Make sure we've got good opacity. And then I'm going to put a wash on it. So now we can start looking at um, what are some other competing areas that we could lay down some color on. Um, see the sleeve there should match this. I'm thinking that's one piece. Uh, that under there is a very small section here that I am probably going to have um, We'll probably actually go ahead and put some of the khaki in there. So I'm thinking this is like uh, uh, well, I don't know what they call it besides uh, night shirts are the only thing I can think of. But uh, so like the uh, medieval equivalent of an underdress. So we're going to have that also be a very light neutral color. So I'm going to start with khaki and then the linen white. When we go to do the white, I'm going to be able to highlight it with some linen white. And uh, again, it's a very neutral color, so the colors that we put around it will really have some good standout. Now colors, I've been thinking on this one a lot. Do I do greens? Do I do blues? Do I do um, more like purples and reds? I, I have not decided yet. I've gone back and forth on this one a lot. And I've got some really vibrant colors. That's the biggest thing on this one here. I have to be very vibrant in color. So what do I do? Um, yellow is a pretty vibrant color. You can do some blues uh, as contrast. Um, you can do purples as contrast. Of course, if you do purples in tone, then you highlight with yellows. That's good contrast. Let me just look at my paints here and see if there's anything that's like really speaking to me. I've got some beautiful blue greens. Knowledge makes me think a little more wealthy, which makes me think a little more purples. A little more purples. So I've got some extremely vibrant colors too. <clears throat> Things like uh, Vampire Pallor, super vibrant, very, uh, very bright color. Mm -hmm. Boy, I just, I don't know. Purples, purples, you can go up to like lilac colors really easily, have it be kind of a springy color. If they were a soldier, in the knowledge domain. I keep going back to uh, purples, maybe pinks. I don't do a whole lot of 
purples and pinks. Let's do purples and pinks. Why not? Heck, why not? All right, I'm going to touch up this driftwood. And I'm just looking for real good opacity. This is the base upon which the wash is going to be based. Oh, I'm not in screen. Sorry. My, I moved my camera angle a little bit, so I'm used to painting a little closer to the edge of my desk. Yeah, maybe purples and pinks, really soft colors. It is a female. She's a tiefling who's in hiding. She's kind of hiding her true self. So here I'm going to do some highlights with the rosy skin. This is just the straight rosy skin color. You can see there's very little going on. I'm trying to be very, very careful with where we apply this. And I know it doesn't look like much yet, but when we get all said and done, um, it is really going to stand out. Uh, then I am going to switch my brushes because this one has an even finer point, which is what I want for the eyes. And just a, another little touch on the khaki. And I'm just looking for good opacity. So a real good solid base. Now for my eyes, I do what I call raccoon eyes. I'm going to pop up a touch of black. touch of linen white. You always want to use an off-white when you're doing eyes. Never use a true, full, pure white. No titanium white, no brilliant white, no bright white, no pure white, nothing. Off-white. Always, always, always. You want to make sure that it is not pure white. So I'm a ways away. This is not going to be easy, so I apologize just because I'm used to holding it right at my chest level. So I have a little bit more control on the brush. try to do this in camera. So I hope that is picking it up. Ooh, doggies. Oh, hit the camera there. This cloak is pretty deep. Picking a brush with really good tip is so important. So important. And you can see I did not use just one brush stroke. I did not just pop in a line or anything like that. I'm really, I would say, um, this is very much like stippling. I'm wanting to make sure that I get the areas that I want and nothing beyond.
And what I want to do with the white is leave some areas of the black. So it's like a raccoon mask. So different from when you're doing these large miniatures like the cloud giants and the dragons back to 28 millimeter. But I like a good challenge. Now I am just going to go through and these are drying quickly because they are such small areas. Oh, I thinned my paint too far. So I'm going to grab a different brush and add a bit of water. Dry that brush off and I'm going to pull that up. Pull it up. Repeat, 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 repeat. Too much liquid on there. That means <clears throat> going a little too thin on my wet palette. So I'm going to give it a moment. I'm going to pull some uh, to the sides so that it um, is not quite as liquid. I'm also going to make sure that my brush does not have excess water. And I'm going to do the opposite eye first, just because I want that water that I put down to dry. And just a little bit of line. Whew. So challenging, so challenging, but so worth it. Give that just a moment. Just going to do a little bit of touch up because I want those eyes to be nice and clear, consistent, looking the same way. Now, if I had gone too much on the black and gotten too far out of the eye socket or the white and I had to start over, I've only got three levels of paint, so it's easier to touch those up. Now I have got the rosy skin with the rosy highlight. I'm just going to blend those two together a little bit. And I'm going to do a little bit more highlighting on the cheeks. on the nose and just a dab on the forehead now while those are trying I'm going to use a bit of brown wash I'm going to just brush over this wash to this cloak This will add some shadow. As well as line it out. Tonally change that driftwood brown a little bit. With the off-white, the linen white, I'm going to mix a little bit of that with the khaki color. Pop a little bit of that in here. Now that wash, because it's so much more uh, water, it'll take a bit for that to dry. Uh, but, but that off-white will dry pretty quick. Go back to my fine brush. I'm using now just straight rosy highlight. Just 
super selective, not the full nose, not the full cheek. chin and I'm not putting any on the forehead because that cloak well I might because I'm going to do one more tonal color I might do just a there we go just a touch Again, these little tiny bits are going to dry fast, so I can move right quickly on to the next one. And this is a blend of the highlight along with the fair skin. And this one is going to be just the tip of the nose. And then I'm just going to do one little tiny pop on each cheek and when we get this all done that is going to give us a lot of dimension and I spin it around a lot like that to look for the sheen on areas that I've painted to make sure that they're drying nice now I could go through and do some lipstick on this um, I am actually going to do a little bit uh, of tonal color to it, but it is not, I'm not going to do it like a bright red lipstick. So I'm using a, uh, a pale violet red. I'll be able to blend that with some of the skin tones to get us a good lip color. Starting with the shadow, because I want this more to be, uh, even though I'm going to be using more vibrant colors, I don't want very strong makeup look. After all, she is a knowledge domain cleric. She is more into the books. So adding that touch there, and then I'm going to go, I'm actually not doing the blend of the shadow and the rosy skin. I'm just doing rosy skin with a touch of this for that lower lip. Just like that, we've got some lips. I know this camera is not going to show it very well, I apologize for that, but uh, when we post it on Instagram you'll be able to see much better the detail of the lips and the eyes. Time for a little drink. So that wash has dried really good. I'm going to go back through just with that driftwood and just lighten up a couple of areas. Because that wash totally changed the color, it's a touch darker. So our driftwood will actually be a highlight to what we laid down. And we want to paint it as such. The lighter areas getting a little bit tonally lighter. Again, that's something you won't see a whole lot of at this level. Now I'm going to mix the driftwood with the khaki highlight. And again, just a little bit of highlighting.
and then going back to my linen white here I'm going to do just a little touch along this underskirt so the goal is by doing these layers of colors even though it's sculpted and will cast its own shadows we're really making those more pronounced by the coloring of it so the goal is for this to be even more apparent that it is a deeper layer <clears throat> and then one final bit of our driftwood and khaki for the very fringe ends that we want to be highlighted out so these are areas where it is the sun going to be hitting anything so you can see this other side is not only this side is so this is the only side that's going to get that highlight but that allows us to move right along to a leather brown you can see I'm doing a lot of different colors here and we've already gotten so many different colors yeah, that's the right brush there um, on this one here this is just straight leather brown I'm going to hmm. yeah so they are armored feet I am guessing Here the details are a little bit more challenging to see because it's so far under. I hadn't really thought of that. Um, so I was just going to do these like leather boots. And that's actually what I'm going to do. I am not... Uh, going to do the armored boots because I'm painting the mini I can do it however I want that's a lazy way to do it I should do the armor but I'm, my biggest challenge is if I do those now and I don't match it well with the armor up here I'm going to regret it No, I'm gonna I'm gonna let that dry, and then I am gonna do them as armor because why wouldn't you want to match? Um, all right, so let's do. How are we on time here? Wow, it's already at one thirty. Let's do this robe and sleeve. We'll have that be one color, and then this kind of tabard is going to be a different color. So let's do these ones here. I am going to do get my other colors put away here I'm done with my flesh tones let's start looking at some colors for pink um, biggest trick is getting a good deep base color without having it be too much and I thought I had one that was going to be really good for it but it is a little bit more purple it's called burgundy wine it's a really beautiful 
color, but I'm thinking of using that for my purple bases. Um, so let's go with see what people think here. for me I think um, Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. Yeah, all right, I think that's what we're going to do. I think that's going to be a good pink progression. And no, I'm not painting this pink just because it is a female. For me, one of the big things I really push myself for is how do I make myself better each year? So for 2022, I have challenged myself to have more vibrant colors. And the only way I'm going to do that is by using more vibrant colors. And again, I don't know how this is going to turn out. I am just as just as mystified but I'm interested to try it and see how it comes out because I think there is a lot I can still learn and develop as I push myself for getting out of my comfort zones of painting lots of browns and greens and blues I'm pretty consistent. I use red a lot for villains. Um, I need to. I need to really push myself. That's one of the things that I always try to do to improve my own painting skills and abilities. So how can I push myself beyond and continue to grow and develop as a painter and a person? hear that on the mic if so I apologize it's my stomach growling a little bit here after we get this layer done probably oh, gonna go get some food I went to a place last night that was absolutely amazing it was called Moe's um, Irish pub very very good the atmosphere alone was just fantastic but um, the food, I had a fish and chips, very, very good. And definitely, if you are in the Houston area, um, well, I guess it's Katy area, which is part of Houston, but so Houston, Katy area, check out Moe's. Good stuff, for sure. Is a bright color, isn't it? And this is the darkest color of this fabric. Well, we'll probably do a wash on this. Maybe, maybe we won't. Maybe we'll just keep it as is and not do a wash.
good opaque base. Make sure everything is nice and dry before uh, adding any paint. This side's a little bit more challenging because you don't want to hit the inside of that cloak, but it almost like disappears into the cloak. Follows that flow of the cloak. So try to be very careful on that aspect. that edge there. And that other arm you can't really see at all. Maybe a couple of little fingers on the shield part, but that's okay. drawing. I'm going to go back to my driftwood. And because the inside of this cloak was that driftwood, we've got to touch up the inside of this hood. Now that the face is done, we can clean this area up. That will help put that neutral base around the face. Ha 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 ha. I'm a poet and didn't know it. Clean up the little bits of paint that we had on the side of the hood. Frame it in real good. Again, this will, oops, sorry. Gosh, hit that camera pretty good. This will frame this face in neutrally, so it will stand out pretty well. This one, I gotta get closer to the edge. I apologize, it's gonna be off camera for a moment just because I need to make sure that I Get it really well. Next week I'll have the camera out a little bit further so that if I need to do any of this fine detail, I'm not pulling it off the camera. But just like we did on the other side, on this side, I just painted the inside of the cloak there. Frame it in. Once that uh, dries, we will do a wash. The wash will actually give us a brown line um, around the face, again, helping separate it from this neutral background. Because the colors are closer with that skin tone to the um, tans that we're using, a brown wash will really um, help us separate those two out, uh, really driving that stark contrast so that when you see it on the table, you're able to really see that face pop out. Prep up that wash. Now, allow that uh, drift with tan to dry before we apply. just super carefully and lightly because I don't want to cover up the face. I just want to apply. We're going to do this one side and allow it to dry. Oof. 
chuck my brush right into my palette and get paint all over the handle. Clean that up a little bit. go through and just make sure that on the skin tones I'm not covering any of that up with the wash just want to now pull that a little bit that gives us a good lining and then same thing on the opposite side too much again we don't want it to cover the skin just go into the crevice give it a bit for some of it to dry watch your forehead you don't want to cover that up if there's any excess bits on the cheeks pull a little bit out And because we're using a wet palette, we've got all these colors already prepped and ready to go, so it's super easy. Um, I am going to mix my next layer of my pinks, which is going to be ready to lay down as that wash is drying. is going to push that deepest pink in further back into the shadows. That's what makes our shadows up. So we're really picking where we lay these colors down. This is going to be where we start our highlight process. This is just a blend of that shadow tone and our mid-tone. Same thing we did on the skin. Some new colors for the fabric. super detail oriented on the sleeve just tonally because we've got more highlights to do to pick out the like the folds in the fabric Driftwood. I'm going to just lighten up a couple of little bits inside this hood. Then the next 
Tech in highlight. Here I'm just thinking where is the light going to be hitting it? Right along this side. framed in. I'm going to use a little bit of my driftwood, just a touch of black. I'm going to make a couple of little eyebrows. off our face. One more blend of our mid-tone pink with our shadow pink before we go to regular pink or just the straight mid-tone pink. This is again just going to give us a little bit lighter tone. Paint a little bit less than what our previous highlight was. And keep the edges a little more rigid. But still broken. Because I don't want good, clean, even lines. This is almost a, uh, a red plum color. Be interested to hear what people think of the coloring. I never claim to be the, uh, the end all be all expert color chooser. I actually bug people quite a bit on what colors they think something could be or should be because I'm looking for inspiration and so if you have color combinations that you really like don't hesitate let me know what they are because I like to experiment and try different things and um, part of my goal for this year is pushing myself to try new things so let me know color combinations that you think are pretty cool or awesome Maybe I'll give them a try. You see how that stands out though from that khaki color. So when we put a different color, probably the purple on the cloak, it's going to have a very, very big impact from the variance. Now just the mid-tones. <clears throat> and then I think after these mid-tones, I'm actually going to uh, call it a day. come 
back and do some more next week. Maybe on this one. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get much done in the interim. We'll see. This one has definitely piqued my interest. I am excited to see how this one turns out. For this character. Definitely starting to see the tonal highlights coming out in the dress or robes, I guess, not a dress, it's robes. And this one here, because we're on the mid layer now, this is where I really want to start paying attention to the sculpt. areas where you've got fabric bunching like here on the sleeve so very important to at this point make sure we are highlighting very carefully on that sleeve all right my coffee is darn near empty My stomach is growling. I need to stand up and stretch. We have been going for um, about an hour and 20 minutes. So good point to stop, I think. We've gotten to mid-tones. I think the uh, definitely is going to be brighter colors. I'm wondering if I put more whites in on that maybe too to really stand that out. So purple on the outer cloak and white on that inner tabard. Maybe on the white inner tabard we can inter, um, introduce some more brighter colors in symbols or pattern. Uh, let me know your thoughts on that if you're joining here on Twitch and watching this on VOD uh, before I get too much further. Otherwise, if you're seeing this on YouTube, the, uh, the next parts are probably going to already be painted. Um, but give me your thoughts and we'll see if they match up or not. Uh, so if you do watch this on YouTube as well. But anyhow, for right now, I am Joe. This is Green Oaks Gaming. Uh, we cover everything RPGs, miniature, hobby related. So make sure to check out our show, watch our schedule, give us a follow. We're not asking for people to subscribe. We just want to grow the um, opportunity to reach more people. The more people that follow us, the easier we are to find on different channels and we try to have content that is going to appease everybody so give us a chance give us a follow let us know what you think and we'd love to continue to grow with the rest of the hobby as it gains new people have a fantastic day who knows we may be streaming later we may be streaming um, this evening who knows but until next time check out our schedule see you then